Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Philippi, said this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Thank God that when we got born again, he began a good work in us. Amen. A good work. Amen. Not a bad work, but a good work. And <clears throat> his whole plan all along is to bring us into the fullness of his plan, as we said this morning. The Amplified Bible says, I'm convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began, he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Hallelujah. Looking over to the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained or prepared that we should walk in them. And then 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, out of the Amplified says, who are being guarded or garrisoned by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. Praise God. Amen. The word uh, good we're talking about good work, that good work in you, um, comes from a Greek word that it means pertaining to having a proper characteristic or performing that expected function in a satisfactory way. Good, nice, pleasant. Amen. Hallelujah. And then perform means to bring to an end, accomplish, perfect, execute, complete, subst uh, substantively, um, it's, it's to bring it to an end. God never intended to work in you and not finish the work. Amen. God didn't intend to bring you up and then drop you off the, the cliff. God did not intend, you know, uh, uh, Brother Hagin a number of years ago was talking about, you know, that they had somebody in the hospital, a church member, and a lady came in church and said, you know, well, Sister So-and-So is in the church. We need to pray for them. And the church prayed and agreed and everything. And um, next night, right before service, she came back and said, well, I just went by to visit Sister So-and-So. And he was visiting. He was minister. He wasn't pastoring. He was visiting minister. And um, she's doing much better. But now let's just all agree together that God will complete the work in her. And the Lord told Brother Hagin, don't you pray. They just took my hands off of it. Anyway, because when God doesn't start stuff, he plans on not finishing. God intends to finish whatever he's working on. Amen? I said amen. Somebody say double shundai. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. God has a plan for you. Let's look in the book of Romans in the eighth chapter. We'll be getting, uh, obviously on Wednesday night, we're, we're in Romans. So if we, anything we cover now in Romans, we're going to hit back on in a little while. And it, well, I say a little while. It might be a long while. We've taken two weeks to get to two verses through the second chapter. Uh, that's, that's not real fast, is it? Looking down here in verse 26 of Romans, the eighth chapter, likewise the Spirit, I'm sorry, 28th verse. And we know, yeah, here we go, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, for, for he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, now think about this now. See, we take a verse out of context and just pull it out. We know all things work together for good to the end of love of God, the college according to his purpose. And pull it out means every bad thing happens is good for you. And the very next verse, he comes back and says, he, for he foreknew he did predestine for them to be conformed to the image of his son. He, brought, he, he, brings, he, he further expounds on what he said. So we can't take a statement without the exposition of that statement. And if, and if, there's, if there's commentary offered by the writer, 
then there was more to the statement than just the blank statement taken out, of, uh, taken out and, and set into other settings, set into theological settings, you know, that God just does bad stuff to you to prove a point or to teach you something or whatever. Moreover, whom he did predestine, he also called. Whom he called, he justified. Who be justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely, also freely give us all things? Wow. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it, is it God that justifieth? Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sore or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Let's read uh, the Amplified Bible through verse 36. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to those that love. Now, understand this. Look at this. Being a partner in their labor. The things you're doing together. I said the things you're doing together. Satan killing you didn't work together for your good. You didn't, you didn't finish God's purpose. You didn't fulfill your destiny. You didn't live out a long, satisfied life. Amen. It's got to be talking about something other than every evil thing on the planet happening to you, and that works together for your good. Uh, da, 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 call according to his, all right. For those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose, for those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness, that he might be the firstborn among the many brethren. And those that whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, that is, acquitted, made righteous, putting them into right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Uh, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? He who did not withhold or spare even his own son but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Who shall, now let's think about that now. One minute, they're, you know, they're, they're jumping on the verse 26, saying, ah, everything happened to you is bad. You know, God has a reason for doing it. He goes right there here and says, he's not going to withhold any good thing for you. Healing's good. Amen. Brother Hagin said he went someplace somewhere, and the guy had like the three monkeys, you know, I see no evil, hear no evil, uh, uh, say no evil. And somebody had written under him and said, you know, and, and changed him to, um, you know, I was, I was sick, and, and now I'm healed. Healed is better. Yeah. Amen. I've been poor and have been rich. Rich is better. I've been lost, I've been saved, saved is better. How many agree with, can agree with me that if you've been sick and you've been healed, healed is better? Amen. Amen. God's not going to withhold good things from us. Healing is good. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, how, well I don't know that healing is good. Well, Acts 10, 38 says it is. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Well, therefore, the scripture tells us and testifies that healing is good. Amen. Hallelujah. So how shall he, uh, will he also not with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Who shall bring any charge to God against God as elect, God's elect? When is it? God who justifies, that is, who puts us in right relation to himself, who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God who acquits us? Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died, or rather, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of the God, actually pleading as he intercedes for us? Well, he's not praying for you to be destroyed. Are you here? Who shall ever separate us from God's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword, even as written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. God has a plan for your life. From the moment that he knew you would receive Jesus Christ as Lord, which was when he looked back into time, looked forward into time from the time of Jesus, um, from the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, he put a plan in motion for your life. He has a plan for you. It's a good plan. I said it's a good plan. <clears throat> now, you may not have experienced it, but it's still a good plan. You may not be walking in it, but there's still a plan. You may not have walked, come to the place where you realize that, that God has a plan, but God has a plan for you. Amen. It's a good plan. He intends to bring it to pass. Amen. Glory to God. And we just have to, we have to get in, in line with that so that we can walk in that plan. Psalm 57, 2 says, I will cry unto God, <clears throat> unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. God has the intention of performing the things that he said to you, placed in your heart, laid out there, and ordained you should walk in them. He has a plan to perform them. Amen? Are you here? Amen. How many have gone home? Anybody still here? One person raised their hand, two people raised their hand, three people raised their hand, four, five, all right, six. Can I get seven? Go run for seven. Get eight, 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 eight. No. Hast thou not known Psalm, I mean, Isaiah 40? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Somebody had to get up and shout. And Keith Moore even wrote a song, or by the Holy Ghost. He gives power to the faint. Power to the faint. It just goes on and on and on. Say, he gives power to the faint. Well, it's a good thing to be keep saying, amen? Especially if you're faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Woo! Say, I can't do it. I don't have anything left in me. Oh, thank God there's a supernatural strength. Your tank may be running empty, but God will strengthen you. Amen? Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord, there's your key, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What for? To what end? To what purpose? To fulfill the plan of the preordained plan that God made for whom he foreknew, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. The God created us in Christ Jesus unto good works. There is a preordained, predestined plan for your life in Christ Jesus that if you'll wait on the Lord, he'll strengthen you, he'll undergird you, he'll see you through to it. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And get you there. I want to get there. In the fullness of it. Can you say amen? amen. God, the, uh, Psalm 84, 11, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give uh, grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walketh uprightly. I looked at that and thought, woo! That's why you think the devil is trying to get people convinced that they don't have to walk uprightly. Because he wants God to withhold things, good things from those who don't walk uprightly. It doesn't matter what I do. God's going to do it anyway. Now he says he won't withhold good things from them that walk uprightly. Now let's, can I say something here? Somehow or another we get this idea that, you know, you, you think about who he's talking to. He's talking to a bunch of carnal people who walk under their old law. He said, and if you walk uprightly, there was a way for them to walk uprightly. Didn't say in perfection. God said something about David this should be the key to everything we understand. I found me a man after my own heart, David, the son of Jesse. And, Je and look, David wasn't all together. He wasn't a perfect man. He had character flaws. How do we know? Money's a magnifier. And when he became king, he got magnified. He had a thing for the girls. Amen. And see, the gold, the glory, and the girls, either one of those three will get you in trouble. The three G's of ministry, I would say, watch out for the three G's, the gold, the glory, or the girls, or all three. Because any one of them will mess you up. Well, David, David loved the Lord, but he, he, uh, 
he had a fleshly problem with women. They sent all the guys out to fight one day, and he stayed back and, and went to see what Bathsheba was up to. That's another man's wife. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. So he's not talking about perfection. Remember uh, when, when the prophet came to him and said, you know, you know, you, there was a man who had one ewe lamb and another had many, but he wouldn't take his own. He went and took the one from the one who only had, uh, the guy only had one lamb, you know. And David gets up on his throne and says, you know, as, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, that man shall surely die. And, and, and Nathan the prophet goes, you be the man. The first thing David did is he got up and repented. Amen. See, to walk up rightly is to walk humbly before the Lord and be repentant. When, when, you, when, you're, when you are shown through the conviction of the Spirit, through the Word of God, that what you've done is wrong, you repent, you can walk up rightly. You don't mean in perfection, absolute perfection. Nobody walks in perfection. Nobody walks in, 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 in absolute perfection. But you can have the right heart and the right attitude about, about the things of God and about God and about your walk with the Lord. Yeah, you sin. Okay, well, you, did you repent? Yeah, I did. I repented. Then go on. You're walking uprightly. Don't come and tell me that it's all right for you to live in fornication. The Lord doesn't care. Then you're not walking uprightly. You don't have a repentant heart. You've got a hardened heart. Hello. That went over real good. He will not, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I'm going to tell you, as soon as you make a mistake, if you repent, God, you, God puts you right back on the uprightly stage. You can get good things from God even right after you sin. If you repent and keep, it, keep yourself uprightly before the Lord. You're going to get a, a, a holy grunt. Mark 4 says that the kingdom of God is like a man who scatters a seed upon the ground and continues sleeping and rising night and day while the seed sprouts and grows and increases. He knows not how. The earth produces acting by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe and permits, immediately he sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle and because the harvest is ready. See, when we grow in the things of God and we mature the things of God, things are growing in us. And in the due season, we'll reap if we faint not. God will bring us into the fullness of the place that we're destined to be if we'll just stay with God and keep walking with God and keep following after the plan of God. Can you say glory? See, you're God, you are God's tillage. Uh, you're God's husbandry, one translation verse says, tillage, another translation says. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 says, you're laborers together with God. Say, I'm a laborer with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. Amplified says, you're God's fellow workmen, joint promoters, laborers together with, with and for God. You are God's garden and vineyard and, and, and field under cultivation. You're God's building. See, we're the workmanship of God that, is in, that we work together with God. God is making a tillage in our heart. God is working with us to produce fruit in our spirit, meaning we have a part to play. There are people who don't believe we have a part to play. We have a part to play. And I say, I've got a part. See, we're laborers together with God. We're not laborers absent from God, and God is not working absent from us. Amen? Psalm 65, verse 9 says, you visit the earth and saturate it with water. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide them with grain, and you so prepare the earth. You water the fields fur furrows abundantly. You settle the ridges of it. You make the soil soft with showers, blessing the sprouting of its vegetation. You crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. The luxuriant pastures of uncultivated country drip with moisture, and the hills grind uh, uh, gird themselves with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy and sing together. God's a good husbandman. And God is raining on your life, on the tillage of your spirit, the tillage of your heart, of his goodness and mercy to bring you into the fullness of his purpose and plan for your life. He's giving you direction. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you understanding. He's showing you the path. He's, 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 um, he's working in you and with you so that you can be in the fullest and come to the full fruition of his purpose for you. God wants you to flourish. God wants you to flourish and come to full fruition. Everybody say full fruition. Praise God.
Praise God. I use a bunch of amplifiers in these notes. Hallelujah. Look at John 15. See, if we're, we're his workmanship, we're his tillage, we're his garden, we're the place. That he, and, and listen, he's working in you. He's working in your spirit. He's working in your heart. He's telling you to do stuff. You know, you got to say, I got stuff to do. John 15, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Now, what does God want us to do? What did Jesus say in one place? I would that ye bear much fruit. God wants us to bear fruit. And so he says, everyone that bears not fruit, you know, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Remember that song? Abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, peace. He has made them mine. I have prosperity, power, and victory. Abiding, abiding in the vine. Amen? That's where it comes from. We have to be, see, somehow or another, we've gotten to the place that we think we can do it without Jesus. We're trying to live without Jesus. We're trying to live without him working in our life. We're trying to live our lives in, a, in, in Christian principles, and some of them false doctrine principles, because we, 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 uh, we abdicate ourselves from any responsibility. And here he's saying, you've got to abide in the vine. Well, if you're abiding in the vine, then you're receiving your wisdom and your life source and everything from the vine. That means you should be acting like the vine. Doesn't it? Did not the, uh, the word of God say this? Be imitators of God as dear children. The apostle Paul said, follow him as he, only as he follows the Lord. He said, follow me as I follow the Lord. In other words, there, that, the only is understood there. Now, you can follow me, but only when I'm following the Lord can you follow me. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, except in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I in the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words Abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. So being the workmanship of God is summed up in fruit bearing. When we are connected to the vine, we're the branches of the vine. Life source is coming out of that vine, and we as branches, because of the life source we're connected to, bear fruit. Now, if we're not bearing fruit, then we're not con properly connected to the, to the vine. You go out in your backyard and you cut, you cut off a limb, that limb's not going to bear fruit. It's just not going to. Why? Because it's not connected to it's, it's not connected to the part that gives us the life source. Where's the water, where's the moisture coming from? Where are the nutrients coming from? They're coming up through the roots, up through the, you know, you, if you study trees and stuff, you know, they got roots and then the roots are in the ground. They got the, the little smaller roots and then the little capillary type roots. And all the nutrients in the soil and stuff and the rain are sucked up through there. And they run up through the tree and then they run out to the branches. <clears throat> now I've got a peach tree and I got an apple tree. Never got anything off of them because the squirrels get them every year. Just the way it is. And I can't shoot at them because the neighbor's window is right there behind them. And if I miss, we've got to buy a $500 window to get $2 worth of peaches. It's just not worth it. You know what I'm saying? We want to get peaches. We, you know, in some years, there, you know, and it's laden with baby peaches. By the time they get ripe, the squirrels, word, the word gets out in the squirrel community. Taylor's peaches have come in. Yep, and they run over there and get them all. Knock them off the tree and everything, just get them all. Go out there and there's a big hole in it. That's like a good peach tree, you turn it over. Amen. 
But, uh, you know, we've, we've gone there in some years, and, and, and I've tried to prune that tree up because it's, it's right in my neighbor's brad for pears, and they're huge. Pulling them too close at the, close at the property line, they're just too big. The brad for pears choke out all the sun and everything. And so they grow out this way. But I've noticed something. When the years when I pruned them off and cut them off, nothing came up on those branches I cut off. Nothing came up. I didn't get any flowers, didn't get any leaves. Those brand, why? Because they get, were separated from its life source. You cannot live out the work. You are the workmanship of God. You're the tillage of God. You're the garden of God. You cannot live out what God ordained for you to be disconnected from your life source. You got to have it. Say, I got to have it. Can't get around it. Say, I can't get around it. Got to have it. All right. Hallelujah. You got to have it. He's the vine. You're a branch. Meaning what? That as long as you're connected to the life source, you will produce what the life source gives you the power to produce. Now, as long as my peach branches are connected to the peach tree, they'll produce peaches. You cut them off, they won't produce anything. Can't be separated from your life source. Amen? See, when you got saved, you didn't get saved to get cut off. The Bible, uh, look over in, uh, I believe it's Ephesians. I'll confirm that. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Let's pick up here in Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, we should walk in them. Who will for remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, which is called uncircumcision, and that which is called circumcision in the flesh by the, made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. Well, guess what they weren't doing if they were without Christ? They weren't producing Christ-like characteristics. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in this world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He's made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Amen. And having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace. They might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He, he went to bring us into reconciliation. Salvation is, and, and, and being the workmanship of God is not absent of a connection with God. God said, be holy even as I am holy. <coughs> How can you do that? You've got to be connected to him. Everybody say, I've got to be connected to him. If we think that we can do this, well, I got saved, I joined the church, I'm going to heaven, and now I'm going to do my thing, you're sadly mistaken. You've got to stay connected to the very place that produces the life in you. I see too many Christians do it. They come along, they get saved, or, they, or even sometimes in some cases get uh, uh, restored out of backslidden states, walk with the Lord for a season, and somewhere in there, they start thinking they can produce the same fruit without the connection. Amen. Or a lesser connection. <clears throat> Some people, people are willing to uproot and go to a drought-ridden area just because they're happy with the, the landscape. Well, that's not going to work. You've got to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, of, 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 of life. Amen? Just like a tree planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. We need to get planted, and we need to draw our life source. Amen? Stop calling tree movers in and moving to some desolate land. Amen. Going to leave a word of faith Holy Ghost church and go over to the, you know, 
First Church of the Frozen Chosen. Wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if he walked in and slapped him upside the head with a two by four. Amen. Don't believe in anything. Don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Don't believe in power. Don't believe in miracles. Or, you're, or sometimes in, on the other end, they go to the Looney Tune Church. They go where it's, it's just crazy. Don't go to the Looney Tune Church. That means Taz might show up and preach. Taz meaning devil. No. Stay connected to the life source. Stay rooted and grounded. Amen. See, if, if, I'll tell you something. Buddy Harrison told me something a number of years ago. Um, I was struggling. Uh, we were back in our home church, and I was just struggling with ministry. And, you know, I was young. I was young. I was young and dumb. You know, you could be young and dumb in ministry, too. And God can have mercy on your stupidity if you've got the right heart. And he, he says, son, you're in the right place at the right time. Don't worry about it. He said, God's building root in you. Now, see, sometimes you've got to get, you know, in, the, in my case, because of ministry, I, I, there was a point in time I was going to be moving into to the place of ministry God called me, which was, as a pastor, was going to be in my, in, in my own ministry, not uh, serving in another church. And I'll be honest with you, um, there have there been days I just wish I could go back and stay there. Let the pastor take care of all the trouble, and I just, just get up and preach every, few, every so often and, you know, and do whatever I'm supposed to do around the church and Hallelujah. No troubles. Just show them and get my paycheck. We got all got flesh, don't we? You know, sometimes being the boss is not as much fun as just being one of the subordinates, I'll just be honest with you. Amen. But, uh, you know, I was just struggling with that, you know, and, um, and, and Brother Buddy came into the church, and he, he got me and said, look, he said, listen, you're at the right place at the right time. He said, God's building root in you. See, because if, you, if you've got to be tra if you've got to be transplanted by God, you got to have enough root you can withstand the transplant. Let me say this: How many of you ever seen tree moving companies? They they take trees, they go in and move them. They they take extreme care. They do all kinds of stuff in preparation. And, and when they go in, and they cut. They go in and they cut as much of the root as they can to take it with them. So then, when they restake it, that root has enough to withstand the transplant and regrow. They don't just go in and snatch it up and rip all the roots up, tear all the dirt off, expose all the roots, and then try to go transplant it. There's a difference between, between being transplanted by God and ripped up by stupidity. Can I, can I, can I get a grunt? Amen. You, you go try to take a tree and just tear it, tear it up and just go stick it in the ground somewhere. It ain't going to make it. Exposing all those roots to everything and all that kind of stuff, you know. Now, you might look green for a season, but you're going to eventually begin to wither. And so it's so important. So, you know, brother, brother said, just stay, just stay steady. When God, when God transplants you, he didn't uproot me, he transplanted. There's enough root to withstand. withstand and I'll tell you, withstand some tough storms. So in, in, in the case of a ministry situation where God wants to move you, he's going to do it right. You know, God will do it right. I said, God will do it right. He'll transplant you. He won't just rip you up. Amen. Amen. Don't be ripping up your life. Don't be ripping yourself out of the ground. Because you'll look good for a season, but in the long run, it's going to hurt you. Let's stay stable and let's stay and let's just be right there and just keep growing and keep drawing out of the soil. Now, I've got a cherry tree in my backyard. How many, how many of you have, have you seen the cherries? If you know, last year, the Sheena cherries, got, there was something going on and they got some kind of disease and stuff and they just lost, lost their leaves in August and, I mean, they, the leaves never got full or anything. They just looked really bad everywhere. We came down my street and everybody's, I thought mine was bad, something was wrong with mine, everybody had it. I don't know what it was. They, you know, we looked up on the internet and some saying it was some kind of rot, root rot or something because it had been so wet. But, you know, this year it's fine. You know why? Well, the, the doggone thing's 50 foot wide. You can measure branch to branch, and it's like 50 feet going out the sides. That means its roots are all out there. <clears throat> it's got a good, deep root base. And even when, when, when a difficult time came, it was able to withstand 
And see, God wants to work in you so you have deep enough root that when difficult times come, you withstand. Why? Because there's a purpose for life. And there are going to be seasons when everything ain't just hunky-dory. Now, we all, how many like the hunky-dory season? Amen. We all like the hunky-dory season. Woo, it's all hunky-dory. How's everything? It's all hunky-dory. We do. You don't see anybody rejoicing saying, I love the unhunky-dory season. But they come. And if you've built root in you and you allow God to work in you in his workmanship and build in you and you stay connected to the vine and, and, and stay, stay uh, 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 tapped. And listen, I got all the branches on my tree are still there. I lost one this winter because of the ice storm. One broke because of the ice storm. Just, you know, you can't help. That's the ice. Ice storms do that. They purged it. Pruned it. Amen. But, I mean, one branch, I lost one branch out of the ice storm. But everything else is, is fine. Because they stay connected to the tree. They stay, stay connected to the source of life. And we're to stay connected to our source of life. We're his workmanship. He's working in us to make us better. He's supplying every good thing. He's not withholding any good thing for you. He don't go up to Janice, oh, she don't need any prosperity. Nyeh, I'm going to cut that off on Janice. John don't need any healing. We're going to cut that off on John. So how shall he who spared not his own son not also with him freely give us all things? So the work, the, the one who's, the God who is your, who's the husbandman is working in the tillage of your heart to produce in you full supply and bring you to full fruition and full maturity so that you're a blessing and can walk out his purpose and plan for your life with strength, without failure, without fainting, but to see it through to the end. Amen. How do we keep, what's our part? We wait on the Lord. Now, that's not talking about you're not going to put on a butler suit and show up. The word wait means to be in communion of ministering with the, to the Lord and, 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 and praying and seeking his fellowship and being with the Lord. That's what that, it doesn't mean you're a butler. I like butlers. I think it's cool when you go to take, you know, they, you know our modern day butlers and, and, and stuff are, are servers in a restaurant. Some need to go to butler in school. Send them to England and learn how to make it a trade and not a, you know, just get by. You're God's workmanship. Now, God deems you such a valuable workmanship. He's laboring together with you to bring you to that place he's called you to. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 All right. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving